Good morning. And welcome to worship, worship at the First Congregational Church of Woodstock, where whoever you are and wherever you find yourself in your life or spiritual journey, you are welcome here. Today, we celebrate the story of Christmas. This morning, we're going to have the Christmas pageant. Um, we do ask that you bear with us. There have been a number of individuals who are ill this morning, and so you're just going to have to imagine certain parts being filled. Although, if you are here and you would like to be part of the... Uh, um, the pageant this morning and substitute, um, just uh, when we sing away uh, in the manger later on in the service, you just head to the back and we'll find a part. It'll be fun, it'll be glorious, it will be joyful. Let's continue in the spirit of worship and let us open, uh, offer our opening prayer that you will find in your bulletin. Holy living light of God, you are our loving presence. Let this love grow in our lives each day so we can be a present of love to others. Unwrap and open our hearts. May it be so. Amen. I invite you to rise if you're able for our opening song. It is hymn number 221 in the bleak midwinter. We are singing verses 1, 2, and 4 this morning. The gift of love is as old as creation itself, even older. We believe that God is love, and so love existed before anything else in creation was even begun. God creates in and out of love and for love and reminds us that that love is indelible. There is nothing that can ever separate us from the love that God has for us as individuals, as humanity, as part of God's created order. We know that in this time when we celebrate joy and peace and hope and love, that sometimes it's hard. We're grieving. 
we are experiencing loss, it's difficult to be joyful. And so in this time, when we lift up our prayers, we lift up our joys of celebration, as well as those of our concerns. Before we begin this morning, I'm going to do as we've done the last couple of weeks throughout Advent. I'm first going to ask you to quietly meditate on two questions. And the first question is this. The first question is, who was a gift to you this week? How did their presence lift up your heart and bring joy even in the midst of darkness? And the second question is, how might you have been a gift to somebody else this week? How did you, in your presence, the time and the space that you spent with another, how did you be a gift to express God's love, hope, joy, peace, and light. We hold in our prayers everybody who's struggling with illnesses of the mind, body, and spirit, especially those in our community who are struggling with RSV, the flu, COVID, and other illnesses. Um, for the next couple of months, prayers for safety and healing for everybody. Um, we are in the midst of um, the rise of infections of all three. Um, of those viruses. So uh, prayers, be safe as we gather. I invite you now then, um, in the spirit of prayer, to lift up all of these prayers and to join me in the prayer that you find in your bulletin. In this prayerful present moment, we ask you, Christ Jesus, the greatest gift of all, to help us savor our journey toward the celebration of Christmas. Help us recognize and create moments of sweet presence rather than filling the voids with the things that do not last. Help us to stop, notice what we are experiencing, and accept it with open hearts and minds. In doing this, we allow you to meet us in the right here right now, right where we are. Amen. Our song of preparation this morning is actually going to be Away in the Manger. It is hymn number 217, Away in the Manger, and we're going to sing verses 1 and 2 um, this morning. first reading is from Psalm 89, verses 1 to 4. As we enter the story of love born among us, we are invited to be present with love, God's love, a love that is never ending from generation to generation. No matter what happens in this world, we are not alone, and the God who is love is with us always. This is the message that is found in the collection of stories, also known as the Bible, which tell the story of God's ever-present love coming to us and being with us and living among us in the flesh. Listen to this prayer of hope from the psalmist. Forever I will sing the wonders of your love, O God, proclaiming your faithfulness to all generations. I'll tell them that your love stands firm forever. Your fidelity is fixed in the heavens. I have made a covenant with my chosen, sworn an oath to David, my faithful one. I will establish your line forever 
and make your throne firm throughout all generations. This is the hopeful promise fulfilled as the Prince of Peace is born in the little town of Bethlehem. Please rise as you are able for Carol 230, O Little Town of Bethlehem. We'll be singing verses 1 and 3. God promises a sign, Isaiah chapter 7, verses 10 through 14. The surprising, wonder-filled birth of Jesus was surprising, and yet not entirely unexpected. Once more, God spoke to Ahaz and said, Ask for a sign from God, your God. Let it be deep as the netherworld, or high as the sky. But Ahaz answered, I will not ask. I will not put God to a test. Then Isaiah said, Listen, O house of David. It is not enough for you to worry those around you, must you also worry my God. Therefore, the Holy One will give you a sign. This young woman will become pregnant and will give birth. You will name the child Emmanuel. God prepares Mary to participate in fulfilling God's promise, Luke 1. And so, hundreds of years later, a young teenage girl named Mary was living in the village of Nazareth. She was engaged to marry Joseph, One day the angel Gabriel came to her saying, peace be with you, Mary. God has chosen you something wonderful. Mary couldn't believe her ears. Me, God chose me. Mary trembled with fear. What could the angel mean? There must be some mistake, she said. Don't be frightened, Gabriel said. You are going to have a baby boy. You'll name him Jesus. You must be joking, Mary cried. I'm not even married yet. Gabriel smiled. Don't worry, Mary. God will send his Holy Spirit to be with you. Your child will be called the Son of God. Everyone will look on him with wonder. He will be the light of the world forever and ever. Mary was amazed. She was going to bring God's Son into the world. Then the angel left, and Mary was filled with joy, and her heart sang. God is good. God remembers the poor and the hungry. God remembers and keeps God's promises. And now, I will share God's plan. Mary becomes part of the great line of love, offering the world the gift of God's presence in the flesh. We may think the perfect gift is outside our reach to give, but in reality, we have all that we need, the heart's love and presence. Listen to what happens next as Joseph hears the news and wrestles with his own ego and fears. God's angel prepares Joseph. Matthew chapter 1, verses 18 to 25. While Mary and Joseph were engaged but not yet married, Joseph found out Mary was pregnant. 
Joseph planned to break the engagement quietly and send her away. Well, that was Joseph's intention. He decided to sleep on it. And wouldn't you know, God, well, God had other plans. That night while Joseph slept, an angel of God came to him in his dream. The angel said, Joseph, descendant of David, don't be afraid to get married to Mary. The baby in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son. You will name the son Jesus, which means God saves, because he will save his people from their sins. When Joseph woke up, he did what the God's angel told him to do. Joseph married Mary. Mary and Joseph prepare, Luke chapter 2. The Roman emperor ordered everyone in Judea to go to the town where their father had been born so they could be counted. Mary, by then quite pregnant, traveled to Bethlehem with her husband Joseph. When they arrived, all the inns were full. Finally, a kind man let them sleep in his stable with the animals. A cow was mooing and sheep were buying. Then everyone heard the sound of the baby crying. Visitors from a far off land come to greet the newborn king. Matthew chapter two. After Jesus' birth, which happened in Bethlehem during the reign of Herod, Magi from the east arrived in Jerusalem and asked, where is the newborn king? We observed his star at its rising and have come to honor him. At this news, Herod became greatly disturbed as did all of Jerusalem. Summoning all the chief priests and religious scholars, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem of Judea, they informed him. For the prophet Isaiah declared, and you, Bethlehem, are by no means least among the leaders of Judah, since you will come a ruler who is shepherd to my people. Herod pulled the Magi aside. He sent them to Bethlehem saying, go, find this child, and then report back to me so that I may go and honor him too. Yeah, that is what I'll do, honor him. The Magi set out to find the child, and wouldn't you know it, the star they'd followed all that time appeared once more. They followed the light, which came to rest over the tiny manger where the child lay. They were overjoyed. They entered the house. They met Mary watching over Jesus. They knelt down and presented the child with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. They prepared to leave, however, having been warned in a dream. They did not return to Herod. They went back to their own country by another way. And that is what we're celebrating, what we celebrate each Sunday and what we celebrate especially at this time of year. It is the gift of our presence to give what we have, our hearts, our time, our prayer, our persistence, our presence, so that we may be a community that celebrates the good news of God's love, that we may bring light into these sometimes hard and uncertain and often dark times. So we thank you for all the different ways that you give to make this community strong, to make God's message real for us to truly be the church alive in this time and in this place. When we sing the doxology in a moment, we sing in celebration of all the different gifts that you give because it takes all of those gifts for us to touch the hearts and the lives and to be present with others. So we say thank you and praise God for giving us gifts that we are able to somehow give back. If you do have financial gifts that you would like to give, you can put them in either of the offering plates at either of the entrances. You can also give online at firstchurchwoodstock.org slash giving. You can also mail your um, gifts to the church at P.O. Box 147, Woodstock, Connecticut, 06281. For those of you who will not be here at the Christmas Eve service this evening, um, we have announced that our Christmas offering this year is going to be dedicated to creating programs and um, providing resources in order to address the epidemic of loneliness right here within the quiet corner. Last year, we dedicated um, our gifts to form a new senior ministry, and we've been meeting on a monthly basis, um, offering different kinds of programs so that people don't feel disconnected, um, just to create friendship and community, and that has been wonderful and joyful. And um, in years past, we've also given the Christmas offering to support our Deacons Fund. Because of your kind um, generosity, the Deacons Fund and the Seniors Ministry are well-funded at this point, and so we wanted to do something that really touched lives 
and made a difference. And so if you'd like to contribute to the Christmas offering, you can give online. Um, there's a special place online where you can do that. Um, if you do give checks or cash or anything, just put it in an envelope and somehow indicate that it's for the Christmas offering. We'll be collecting monies for that offering over the next several weeks. With all of that, I do invite you to rise as you're able that we may sing the doxology in celebration of the many gifts that we give to this community. Creator God, we give you thanks for all of the gifts that you shower upon us, especially the divine gifts of peace, hope, joy, and love. We ask that you continue to inspire us with the presence of your Holy Spirit, that we may use these gifts to magnify your love and light in our community and in your world. We ask all these things in your many names. Amen. My friends, for those of us who are going to come to the Lessons in Carol service, it is at 7.30 p.m. this evening. 
it is going to be a joyful time. If you are not going to make it to the Lessons and Carol service, then may you have a merry, safe, and blessed holiday, however you choose to celebrate it. And just remember, next Sunday, 10 a.m., we'll be down in the dining hall. It will be brunch church as we joyfully let go this year that has been, and we hopefully anticipate the year ahead of us. Bring what you can and just come so that we may be community together. With that, I invite you to join in our closing benediction, which you will find in your bulletin. Every day, we seek to discern how to live faithfully as we surf the internet, choosing which sites get our attention, as we choose news sources that will shape our worldview, as we buy groceries and steward our resources. We are always making choices about how we love the world that God so loves, how our attention, our presence, participates in the mission of God, abundant life for all. Let us go and share the good news of God's love and joy and live abundantly. Thanks be to God. Amen. Thank you.